-hmm. I do not care a damn for any art that is not used as propaganda. We return. We return from fighting. We return fighting. W.E.B. Du Bois, the 1920s. Ladies and gentlemen, the 1920s marked the beginning of the Harlem Renaissance. The Harlem Renaissance was a movement that helped put African American art on the map half a century ago, but has adversely affected many black artists today in the narrow way in which their work is now viewed. So why is this important to us? As Americans, it's important to understand the diverse aspects that make up our culture. Art today is a huge part of our culture, and it's just as important to understand the people behind art, their identity, their motivations. Today, I will first discuss the history of the Harlem Renaissance and some of its motivations before moving on to its positive impact on black artists at the time. Finally, I will discuss the negative impact it's had on contemporary black artists. The Harlem Renaissance can be defined as the period during which African Americans promoted political, economic, and social agendas that would benefit the black community nationally. So why did this happen? During World War I, African Americans served in the army for the first time ever, as over 350,000 black soldiers fought in the armed forces. However, they came back to the same old America. Ladies and gentlemen, these men had put their lives on the line for this country, and for what? A country that wouldn't even give them the freedom that they deserved? No. This was injustice at its worst, and it led to the emergence of leaders such as Du Bois and Elaine Locke. Du Bois was the founder of the NAACP, and Elaine Locke was the first African American Rhodes Scholar. And together, they began to mass produce writings and speeches advocating for the production of African American art in order to combat these injustices. And thus, the Harlem Renaissance was born. During the Harlem Renaissance, there was a huge increase in the number of artworks produced, as over 108,000 paintings, 18,000 sculptures, and 2,500 murals were produced during the heart of this movement. The major style that was born during this movement is what Sharon Patton, in her book African American Art, calls primitivism, which is the style of putting African objects into one's artwork. Locke and Du Bois could care less about black artists who produced anything that didn't connect somehow to black heritage or black history. And so as you can see from works such as these, they all either had to do with African scenes, African people, or African objects. So if we analyze the Harlem Renaissance, we can see that the overarching theme and goal of this movement was using art as political propaganda, persuading people to adopt a certain viewpoint about one's race. And soon enough, white America did begin to notice. As Kelly House says in her article, Only We Can Tell the Tale, white Americans were so impressed by early African American artwork that much of the funding for these later artworks came from people of European American descent, as they dispensed advice, encouragement, and money to young black artists. And so with white America on their side, African American art finally achieved the recognition that it deserved. However, its primitive style ultimately set up the hardship that black artists today face. Black artists today face a double-edged sword. On one side of this sword is the fact that they benefit from being African Americans. Their race automatically allows them to appeal to a certain audience. It helps them. However, on the flip side of this sword is the fact that their work is always judged as black art, and not simply as art. And so, for example, many of the exhibitions and galleries that were produced during the Harlem Renaissance are still around today, and these are black-only shows. So obviously, it's easier for these artists to get into these shows. They like, it's a great way to get their name out, and there's less competition. The same thing holds true for museums. They're automatically considered for African-American exhibits when they submit their artwork to a museum. And sure, it helps them get into these museums, but then they're always labeled as black artists, and not simply as artists which is how they want to be labeled. And it unfortunately shows, as Romir Buterin says in his article, The Negro Artist's Dilemma, that art is judged more by sociological factors rather than by aesthetic factors. And so African Americans decided to do something about this. And thus, the post-black movement emerged. Post-black is art characterized by artists who are adamant about not being labeled black anymore. 
They want to redefine complex notions of blackness. They don't want you to believe that there is a monolithic African American art. They want to express their individuality. And so if you take a look at works such as these, more abstract paintings, these are from Jackson Pollock, with, just by looking at the painting, you wouldn't be able to tell whether the artist behind it is white, black, brown, or yellow. And this is exactly what these artists wanted. They wanted to redefine their identity, more in terms of their artwork, and less in terms of their race. So today I've shown you the positive short-term impact the Harlem Renaissance had on black artists half a century ago, but its lingering effect today, and the fact that many black artists today are seeking to redefine their identity more in terms of these types of artwork. And so I challenge you all, the next time you view a piece of art, view it without considering any of the outside factors. Because this unbiased judgment of art is ultimately what artists desire. It's what they deserve. <laughs>